Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how easy it is to dress up plain craft paper, boxes, bags, and tags into beautiful customized party decorations. Craft is so easy to work with because it's a middle value already, rather than white and black, which are also neutrals, but are kind of extreme. The products I'm using today are from Paper Mart. You can find them online at www.papermart.com, and they just got in these awesome craft tags, which I love, and you can get them in smaller quantities is like 50 so you don't have to have a big box of a thousand on hand if you don't want to now the first step is to squeeze out a little bit of gesso or white paint and I'm gonna say I like gesso a little bit better for this because you can stamp on it you can write on it and it dries in seconds so I'm using some gesso and you'll probably notice as I am painting I'm getting a streaky look that's because I'm just picking up a little bit of paint on my bristles and then tapping it off onto my um, you know makeshift palette there see how I just kind of tapping off the extra. I'm just going around the edges of each of the boxes, bags, and tags that I have, and that's just going to give me a really nice rustic look. You can pretty much go with any theme you want to decorate your bags, but I decided I would choose an Americana theme, so I grabbed some scraps of red, white, and blue patterned papers. These papers are from Die Cuts with a View from the Nantucket line. I'm using paper punches just to um, help shape the paper. I'm just using um, squares and my floor squares. I go to them a lot. I don't have a lot of punches, but I find these stack up and layer really well. I believe in collecting basic punches or basic die cuts because they'll be used over and over in different projects. Here you can see how they all work well together. I also wanted to use some rubber stamps to add some interest to my designs. Here are some by Kaisercraft and Tim Holtz. I used a paper trimmer to trim down some of my papers to fit my bags and tags and boxes. Make sure to cut them a little bit smaller than your bags and boxes. That way you'll get to show some of that awesome white um, texture you put on the edge and also it'll help save them from becoming worn. Simply use a little dry adhesive to stick them down. Now you can begin layering some of your punched shapes onto the tag. Now sometimes I like to stamp first and sometimes I like to stamp after. It's completely up to you what you prefer. And if you don't have any stamps, then you can just layer it and call it good. Since these tags are new to me, I was wondering how they would take ink. So I'm using a little bit of a dye-based uh, ink here and a letterpress style happy birthday stamp from Stampin' Up! And I'm stamping directly on the brown part of the tag. Now, it was taking quite a while to dry, so if you do want to stamp with um, a stamping ink directly on those tags without treating them first, I would recommend that you heat set them or heat emboss them. I decided to ink the edges of my bags and tags because I think it looks really cool with that dark brown ink right against the um, light brown craft and the white. I just think it's just a cool way to bridge the gap of all our different values. Now I'm using some of that white gesso with a makeup applicator as stamping ink. So I just dabbed it on my stamp and now I'm going to randomly stamp it around. Now these are Tim Holtz stamps so they have kind of a grungy look to them so it's totally fine if you get a blob of paint or the stamp skips. And hey did you notice I put craft paper down on my table to protect the work surface? That's another great use of craft paper. And you can get it by the roll at Paper Mart. I love this stuff for wrapping gifts because it goes with everything, but it's cheap enough just to protect my work surface when I need to. I also wanted to add some of that white stamping to the tag we layered earlier. Simply just ink it up with your makeup sponge and stamp away. The one thing you must remember whenever you're stamping with acrylic paint or gesso is to clean your stamps immediately. So I just have my bucket of rinse water here and an old toothbrush and I'm simply going to scrub the paint out of my stamps that I've used. That way it won't dry within the crevices and your stamp will be good as new next time you go to use it. Don't skip this step. <laughs> I wanted to keep this project pretty easy for anyone to reproduce at home, so I just chose a grungy star to add to my um, my items as an embellishment. It was part of the same set that had the backgrounds that I just showed you from Tim Holtz. I just think any star like that just gives it kind of like a military look and a very Americana look, and I think it looks really fun in this project. I like to skip around when I'm doing a set like this and kind of add a little to this and a little to that. I'm using that same background stamp this time with brown ink and I'm just kind of pressing it to the different sides of my takeout box. Like I said with these grungy stamps you don't have to be perfect and you let it skip it's still going to look fantastic. 
Now we're gonna do some more punching and layering. I'm using the same papers I've been using the whole way through. That's a great thing about a limited palette is that you keep pulling from the same stuff. So it really takes out the guesswork, takes out the stopping and thinking and going to fetch new supplies. You can keep using the same stuff over and over again and it really makes the process of creating a theme set so much easier. Don't forget to ink all your edges to create a cohesive look throughout the set. It's a really quick and easy step that makes things look fantastic. I added some thick jute cord to my tags. I love this product because it adds a really nice texture. It's really sturdy and easy to work with. And I'll put a link to it in the video description so you can find it at Paper Mart. It also cuts really easy with my scissors, which I also appreciate. Finish up embellishing the rest of your bags and boxes. Now this tin tie coffee bag is really nice because as a favor bag, you get a lot of uh, room to add goodies. I'm using the same exact punch to get that same medallion shape. I'm gonna layer on um, paper strips and also do a little inking and stamping to finish this bag off. Now I'm all about using my scraps. So even for that tiny little jewelry box, I decided I wanted to cut some little strips of pattern paper and adhere them to the top and the bottom of the lid. I hope by now you can see how easy it is to customize craft paper products. I love it that you can just use the same motif, little bits of paper over and over again and get a really cohesive coordinating look. See, I'm using the same star stamp. I'm inking all the edges with the brown. Those are the little details that tie a project together. Now you can completely leave your project like this. I think it looks very elegant, but I felt like I wanted a little more sparkle with my project, so I decided to add a little bling. I'm using some Blue Star Garland, which I actually got for New Year's Eve, but I thought it was perfect for this. And I'm simply wrapping it around the handle on my takeout box. You can also add it to the strings on your tags as well. Now let's have a look at the finished projects. All kinds of patriotic party favors for your next soiree. It would be great for Father's Day, a birthday, or even a patriotic wedding. I want to thank our sponsor, Paper Mart. You can find them online at www.papermart.com, where we make you look even better. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.